Come on, let's give praise to a God that never fails. Come on, it's our last Wednesday night of the year. It's our last Wednesday night. Our last Wednesday to give him some praise up in his place. They say Wednesday's the most on fire night we have. All campuses together. Let's give our king a round of applause, a shout of praise, because he's worthy. He never fails. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. Before we're seated, I want to I want to read a, a scripture from Philippians 1:6. This scripture I believe is going to encourage us tonight. And I am certain that God, who began the work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. You know, it's the last Wednesday and we're preparing for a new year. And as we prepare for a new year, I believe that God is going to set us up to not just start strong, but finish strong. Some would say finish strong. Some of us might dread the new year. You might dread the new year resolution phase that everyone goes through. You might dread getting a, a subscription to the gym again, only to go two weeks. Uh, you might dread, and this happens, you might dread picking up the new book. You might dread these things. But some of us, that's a real dread that we have because we're afraid of disappointing ourselves yet again. But I believe that what God is going to begin to do in each and every one of us is break the cycle of starting something and not finishing it all the way through to the end. Someone say, that cycle is over. Someone say, it's broken off of my life. Tonight, we're going to learn not just how to start strong. We're going to learn how to finish strong. Someone look at someone next to you and say, finish strong. Let's pray. Father, speak through me. It is not me. It's all you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Give your neighbor a high five. You know, there's a lot of examples there's a lot of examples I could think of. Um, of uh, well, there's an th example I could think of of crazy comeback stories in sports. If you're a sports fan, you know just recently we've seen the biggest comeback in NFL history. And it was all on the hands of a quarterback named Matt Ryan. And if you know who Matt Ryan is, he's famous for losing one of the biggest Super Bowl leads of all time. This is, I don't know how long ago that was, that was years ago. He was up in the third quarter, 28 to three. If you're up that much in the third quarter on a Super Bowl, it's probably over. People start going home, people start tuning out, the game is over. But look what the score ended up as, 34 to 28. Now, I'm not trying to rep anybody here. I'm not trying to say Tom Brady is a GOAT. He probably is, but I'm not saying any of that. But the same guy who lost that big lead lost the biggest comeback in NFL history. He was up 33 to 0. No NFL team had ever come back going into the half at that kind of score ever before. This guy, Matt Ryan. Sorry, Matt Ryan, if you're tuning in tonight. You just so happen to be tuning in to the Wayward Outreach. This is going to turn out good for you too, I promise. This is a good message. But it's funny how many of us, we think that just starting out on the right foot is what it's all about. But what we start to learn in scripture is that the way we start things isn't necessarily as important as how we finish things. In scripture, there's men of God who started off with the anointing and with the power of God. One man in particular is Solomon, or even I could even think of Saul in the, in, the, in the Old Testament. He started off with the anointing, with the call of God, and later lost the, the, the mercy, lost the, the, the favor of God upon his life to lead the people. So you have guys that start off the right way, but then you also have guys in scripture, a lot of them, who start off the wrong way, yet get it all right in the end. 
they see the victory in the end. One person I could think of is Paul in the New Testament who began his ministry, or not even, I don't want to call it a ministry. He began his work catching, he was a bounty hunter of people that claimed Jesus as Lord. He was hunting Christians down, locking them up, and getting a lot of them persecuted. And later on became one of the writers of the majority of the New Testament. He, you're talking about someone that used to kill Christians, now writing part of the Bible. If, if that doesn't tell me that finishing strong is more important than starting something strong, then I don't know what does. Now, the reason I'm bringing this message up to finish strong, obviously we're in the last Wednesday night of the year. But I want us to go into the new year with this mentality. Then I'm not just going to start. We're going to start on the right foot. Of course we are. We're going to start together. Of course we are. But I'm not just going to start strong. I'm going to see it all the way to the end. And all this cycle of going backwards and being bound and being lost and throwing in the towel halfway through the fight. Those days are, they're over. Someone say it's over. I want to share with you. Here are three facts about finishing from scripture. Three facts. Number one, finishing something is better than starting something. This is biblical. I didn't make that up. This is not just some cool saying. Yeah, I have a quick question for you. Let's just say, let's just say that someone that helped write part of the Bible was in the room today and wanted to give you some advice. By show of hands, how many, how many people here would want some of that advice? You would say, yeah, give me some of that. Okay, well, let's see what 2 Corinthians 8 says. 2 Corinthians 8.10, here is my advice. Literally, the, one of the people that wrote a huge part of the New Testament says, here's my advice to you. He helped write the Bible. And he's giving us advice. Let's listen in. It says, it would be good for you. Another version says, it's to your advantage for you to finish what you started a year ago. I think it's so funny the scripture is coming up on the last week of the year. How many of us have started something in the beginning of this year that we just kind of pushed off to the side? How many, told, how many said, you know what, this year I'm going to get through Holy Warriors, I'm going to go through all three classes. And then we just kind of said, oh. It doesn't really fit my schedule. How many of us said, you know, I'm going to be committed. I'm going to serve. I'm going to lead. I'm going to finish what God started in me. I think it's funny this scripture is coming up. But the advice that we're getting from scripture here is to finish what you have started a year ago. That's interesting to me. So what the scripture is telling us is to bring it all the way to the finish line. Instead of starting a lot of things, instead of trying to do something new, why don't we finish something? I think it's funny. We sometimes overcomplicate ourselves into doing nothing at all. Like we make up all these different routines. We pick up new books. We pick up new diets. We pick up new routines. We pick up new hairstyles. We pick up new boyfriends and girlfriends. We pick, we pick up all kinds of stuff. Thinking that all the answer is in all of the new things when, when the scripture is making it very plain for us in verse 10. It says just it would be good for you to just stop all the guesswork and finish what you've started. See, Jesus doesn't overcomplicate this thing for you. And some of us are searching into the, into the universe to try and find the answer. What's the X factor for me? This must be it. Ah, this is it. No, this is it. And God is saying... It's all in the word. I gave you the answer. I've already provided for you the way. And it's very clear what you should do. You know, some of us, we're looking for God to give us new instruction, but he won't because we haven't done anything with the instruction he already gave you. He's saying, why don't we finish that first before I take you to the next step? How can I graduate you to college if we haven't even finished elementary school? I, I, don't, I don't mean it. I'm preaching to me too, guys. So it's just, this scripture is making it very plain. And God is taking the guesswork out of what we need to do. We need to finish what we started. We need to finish strong. 
We need to finish the instructions that God has given us. In the beginning of this year, we're, gonna get, we're getting instructions even now. We're getting instructions to finish this year strong. Show up on Saturday. We show up in the house of God. Every year we do this. Every year we start the year off. We, we bring in the new year in the house of God. And every year we're going to start off the new year fasting and praying together as a church. And every year we're going to believe and set goals. And every year we're going to believe and get vision and downloads from heaven. Every year we're going to hear from God. We're going, to get a, we're going to get downloads from the Lord. And I believe that as we get these downloads, we're not just going to get it and drop it. We're going to get it and finish it in the name of Jesus. No more just getting it and dropping it. It says in Ecclesiastes 7, 8, it is better to finish something than to start it. It is better to be patient than to be proud. Look at, look at the message version. It says, endings are better than beginnings. Wow. Sticking to it is better than standing out. That's funny. Sticking to something is better than just standing out. I, 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 love, I love this verse because we're, we're learning that we don't have to just be people that start something and start something and start something. If you need to be patient and stick to what God has already put in front of you, then finish that all the way to the end. Finish your discipleship process. Finish your growth plan. If you're in the men's or women's home, finish the program. Get all the way through to the end. If you're in this church and you're saying, I got to come to church every Sunday, keep coming. You committed to coming for a year, come the whole year. Give God everything. Just finish and go all the way through. And sometimes it's not glamorous to keep doing the consistent thing. It's not glamorous to, to go every single week, but I tell you what, it's to your advantage and it's very good for you to finish what you started. Am I preaching to anybody? I'm preaching to myself, just so you know. Go back to 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Look at verse 11. It says, now you should finish what you started. Let the eagerness, somebody say eagerness. eagerness. Let the eagerness you showed in the beginning be matched now by your giving. Give in proportion to what you have. Now understand that this scripture is, is mo most often used when we're talking about giving. But I believe that we can apply the same in type, type of attitude in giving effort in everything that we do. The key word I have here is eager. That word eager in the Greek is prothumia, which literally means willingness, readiness, and promptness. I'll say that again. To be eager is to be ready, to be willing, and to do things promptly. So the real discipline of a finisher is to, is to remain eager. Someone say eager. And to be eager doesn't mean to be chipper, okay? We think eager, we think it's someone that's just like, I'm ready for the day. How are you? Good morning. It's four in the morning, bro. I don't, it's too, too early for all that. No, eager doesn't mean chipper. Eager is not an emotion. Eager is not a feeling. And I'm here to, I'm, I'm letting you know right now, if you're depending on an emotion to drive you through the end of the year, you're going to fall halfway, you're going to fall like 10 minutes in. We cannot depend on an emotion or feeling to drive us into success, to drive us into God's promises, to drive us into God's plans. If Jesus depended on his emotion to drive him to the cross, he would have never gotten there. We know this because in Gethsemane, he began to pray with full of stress. He, began, he even stressed so much, his, his blood vessels began to burst, and he was sweating blood, and he was praying to the Lord. He said, God, if there's another way, let it happen. Nevertheless, let your will be done. In other words, finish what you started, God. I'm eager, I'm ready, I'm willing, and I'm going to respond right now to the call that you have on my life. I'm not depending on my emotion. I'm not depending on my feeling. I don't feel like it, but I'm going to get myself through this because, God, if you promise you're going to finish the work in me, then I believe you're going to carry me through to the end. You are the firm foundation I need. It's not within me. It's not my own strength. I'm depending on you. Is there anybody in here that's depending on God to see them through to the end? See, one of the biggest challenges we're going to have 
is not in starting something. It's going to be keeping the same eager, the fiery eager, the eagerness to go all the way through to the end. The willingness to do it. And you know, you don't have to be willing to do something when it's convenient and fun and exciting. That's easy. It's like someone saying, hey, are you willing to go to Disneyland? It's like, ah, oh, yes. Send me, Lord, I will go. You don't need to be willing to do something like that. You know where eagerness is applied and willingness and readiness and promptness is applied? It's applied in the context of a very stormy, fiery trial. We need eagerness applied when it's very hard to keep going. See, finishing strong is not about being excited. Finishing strong is about committing to what God has already destined for you. Whether I do this, with, whether I do this and I go through this scarred, I go through this battle tested, I go through this with some, with some battle wounds, I'm going to get through the end because I know that God has a plan for me and I'm going to see it all the way through. I'm willing to go through a fight. We need to go eagerly. We need to be ready. I want us to go to, I want us to look at, uh, let's go to point number two. Here are three facts about finishing. Fact one was finishing something is better than starting something. Fact two is the reward for finishing is great. Someone say the reward is great. James 1.12. Anyone who meets a testing challenge head on and manages to stick it out is mighty fortunate. I love that. Anyone who meets a testing challenge head on and manages to stick it out is mighty fortunate. Your testing challenge is to finish what God has put in front of you. Pastor Joe said this two weeks ago. He said, it takes more faith to go through a problem than to escape it. So stop looking for shortcuts. <laughs> Romans 5.3, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us. Someone say, help us. Anything or anyone that helps you is good for you. If someone is going to help you, please help me. I need some help. Anyone need some help in here? You know what scripture is saying is going to help us? Your trial. Okay, now I don't want no help. Now it's like, <laughs> I don't want no help no more. <laughs> the, the Bible is saying, literally saying this. The testing challenges, the trials that we face are designed to help you develop and grow and see you through to the finish line. I don't know if this is a popular thing to say. The reward is that we grow. The reward is that we become a new person. The reward is that we become closer to the Lord. The reward is that we can reach more people through our testimony. The reward is that when we, when we say no to the addiction, no, 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 we can go to someone that's dealing with it and say, come on, I can help you. I've been there. I know the fight you're going through. I know what you're dealing with. Come on, I know exactly, I know exactly how to get through. I got through it with the help of Jesus and so can you. Come on, you, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. When, when you can finally get through a battle, you can help somebody else get through it too. That's a reward. So the question isn't whether we're going to face a challenge. That's not a question at all. And we all know that. The real question is how, the real, the real dilemma, the real, the real idea is, how we stick it out when we face the challenge. See, there's a common denominator in people that see a victory. The common denominator is always this, that they stick it out when it gets tough. It's called endurance. It's called a fight. So you have to face, face these challenges head on. Don't throw in the towel or tap out. Don't let a fence get you out of position. Don't let gossip get you out of position. Don't let a bad attitude get you out of position. D well, come on. Don't let a trial get you out of position. Don't let anything get you out of position. Stick it out. Get through it.
Because if God promised that he's going to finish a work within you, you can trust him. We sing it today. He's a firm foundation. We don't got to depend on anything else. I don't need the economy to tell me whether I'm going to make it or not. I don't need the gas prices to tell me whether I'm going to get, get from point A to point B. I know that my God's got me. I'm going to make it through. I'm going to get to the other side. My family's going to be blessed. My marriage is going to be blessed. My home is going to be blessed. I got this. Why? Because I know God got this. Someone say face it head on. I remember when I was, uh, I played football. Believe it or not, I played football when I was younger. I know. Don't say what you're thinking right now. <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't the biggest kid on the field, but I was a lineman, so that was weird. Um, but, but I learned something that helped me out. I learned, some, I, I learned a valuable lesson. There's a drill we used to do. They call them, I think they call them Oklahomas now. Some of them just call it heads up, whatever. You're laying down on your back. I, I'm not going to actually do this, but maybe I should. I, I, I was going to call on you, but you're huge, so I'm not He's like a bodybuilder. I need someone that's tiny. And now, now I feel bad for calling someone else. Okay, let me just call on someone who's just like average. Come on, Brian. Just come up real quick. No, no, not average. Oh, man. Now, we got, now I dig a big old hole. I'm digging a big hole. Okay, you know this drill I'm talking about, right? Football? You, you know Alabama. Is that what it's called? Okay, uh, you know what it's called too, right? You, you know what it's Okay, I need some. Who knows what? You, you know what I'm talking about? Come up here real quick. Come up. Yeah, humble beast. Humble beast. I'll put him up against Humble Beast, y'all. <laughs> yeah, that boy right there. Okay, so, yeah, so this is what I want you guys to do. Lay down on your backs. There's this drill, I guess it's called Alabama's. We used to do this. Oh, you would lay down on your back. One person would have the ball. Sometimes no one would have the ball. But a whistle would blow, and immediately you had to get up and crack each other. So the whistle will go, three, two, one, Burp. Oh, false start, boom! Yeah, I, I would've did the same thing. That was quick. He about to take you out. Yeah, good job, thank you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Give him a hand. That boy's life flashing for his eyes. So we know, we know who was good at those. Uh, so we used to do this drill, and there's one, there's like the one main thing you need to get. Do not hesitate. Don't hesitate, don't pull back, don't brace for impact. Pummel through that guy. Run straight through him like you're trying to run through a brick wall. Run all the way through. That's the trick. If you get hurt, you're probably going to get hurt. So how did I learn this lesson? Well, because I hesitated. And that got cracked. I got cracked so hard, I got the wind knocked out of me. Everyone, anyone ever got the wind knocked out of them before? You know the feeling? You can't talk. It's the weirdest thing. You're like, <gasps> I'm okay. That's, no, I'm not even joking, not exaggerating. That's literally how you sound. We get the wind knocked out of you. I'm fine. So I got the wind knocked out of me. But then I learned this drill. I, I just, you just learned the trick. It doesn't even matter a lot of the times because a lot of these kids are the same size as you. The, the only trick is this. One of them doesn't hesitate. One person in that line is more fearless than the other person. And one person is going to either get cracked or do the cracking. So I got the wind knocked out of me because I got cracked. But later on I realized just run through the dude. You're going to get hurt anyways. So I started doing the cracking, believe it or not. Everyone's like, mm -hmm. but you know what's funny? You could crack somebody so hard that you still get the wind knocked out of you. So I crack someone, he's on the floor, coaches are checking on him, and, I'm, and everyone's like, yeah, De La Rosa, yeah. And I'm like, thanks, man. Yeah, I got that guy, did it, I? The, well, something I learned just reflecting on that, thinking back to it. Either way, you're probably going to get the wind knocked out of you. Whether you're doing the cracking or you're getting cracked. In life, this upcoming year, you're probably going to go through a crazy storm. 
you're probably going to be in a situation where you feel like, I got the wind knocked out of me. You're going to go through some trial regardless. We're all going to go through some type of fight, some testing challenge, some trial, some, some storm. We're all going to go through it and face it. Wouldn't you rather be the guy that does the cracking? Wouldn't you rather be the person that's victorious at the end of the day? Wouldn't you rather be the person that finishes that fight strong rather than be the person that's laid out and, and, and totally taken out by the challenge and the fight? I'd rather be the person when it comes next year, at the end of this year, where I look back and say, I, I may not have got it all perfect. I may not have been a perfect Christian. I may not have got it all together, but I know this. I know one thing, that I finished strong. I didn't hesitate. I got through every storm. I fought every fight. I pushed through. I showed up when I was told to. I was in service. I gave it my everything. I gave it my everything. I gave it my everything. God, I maybe don't sing the best, but I worship with my heart. God, I maybe don't have the best gift, but I serve eagerly. God, I maybe don't know all the fancy words, but I pray with everything. God, I maybe don't understand every word, but I read and I study the word eagerly. God, I give everything to you. I give it all. I push through and I don't back down. I stick it out and I fight to the end. We need some people that can get all the way through, push through that brick wall, fight until there's nothing left in you. Give it everything. Leave it all on the table. Surrender. Repent. Turn from your old ways. Turn to God. Give them everything. We need to finish strong. We need to love eagerly. We need to surrender eagerly. We need to repent eagerly. Pray eagerly. We need to worship eagerly. Give eagerly. Serve eagerly. We need to give God everything we have. <clears throat> you know, it's this verse. I'm going to go, go to 2 Corinthians again, chapter 8. Look at verse 12. It says, whatever you give, whatever you give is acceptable if you give it eagerly. Give according to what you have, not what you don't. Even if you feel like you're not doing much, but it's everything you got, that's acceptable to the Lord. Give all your effort. See, an acceptable effort, something done eagerly. It's something done with a willingness, with readiness. The promptness. And Pastor Marco gets a vision from God and he leads this church and he says, church, we're coming on Saturday. It's not an invitation. It's not a, hey, let's have some fun. This is a war call. It's a call on the battlefield. There's something God's going to do on Saturday. And God's ready to deliver a word to us as a church. When we get instructions, we show up, we move. When we say we're starting the year in a daily growth book together, we're going to study the word of God as a church together. This is instruction. This is, this is a battle plan. This is a, this is a war call. This is, this is for us to follow through with. And in all these things, this, this growth book, I mean, you, may, you may not read the best. You, you may... You may I'm not sure what it could be. I'm not sure what excuse the enemy can try and prompt up in our mind. And some of these, it may not even be excuses. They could be valid reasons. But I'm here to let you know, you give everything you got to God. And I promise you, it's acceptable. And he's gonna, his grace is going to make up the rest. I promise you that. After all, it doesn't even matter how gifted you are. It doesn't matter how polished you could talk. It doesn't matter how polished I could preach the word up here. If I'm not depending on the Holy Spirit, I got nothing to give anyways. We got to depend on God to see us through to the end of the year. The only way we're going to finish strong is if we're giving everything to God and we're letting him see us through. Let him see you through all the way to the end. 
Let him get you through to the finish line. Because only he can. Whatever you give is acceptable. But you know what an unacceptable gift is? Something that's unacceptable is something that's done without that eagerness. It's something that's done apathetically or indifferently or lethargic. You want to know what a literal, a literal antonym or opposite word for eagerness is? And this comes literally from the, from the Google definitions. The opposite of eager is lukewarm. If we're not doing things with eagerness, church, we're doing things with a lukewarm heart. We're approaching ministry. We're approaching our lives. We're approaching the new year. We're approaching the church. We're approaching the word from God. We're approaching his instruction. We're approaching everything with a lukewarm heart. You know what that's saying? Basically, we're saying, I can do with or without. I could, you know, one day I'm in it, one day I'm not. It doesn't really matter all that much. When we do things with that heart, we're doing things with the lukewarm. We know the scripture says that God spits out the lukewarm. Let's not be unacceptable, unacceptable to God. Let's bring an acceptable gift. Let's bring something acceptable in this new year. Let's finish strong. Someone say finish strong. strong. Last point. The consequence. There is a consequence for not finishing. Acts 20, 24 says this. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. What's the work? The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. This is the work that's been assigned to each one of us. All of us have this assignment that's written on our life's plan. If you wanna take a look at the, the script that God has written for you, included in that script is gonna be telling people the good news about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be sharing with others about what he's done in your life. The scripture is literally saying, my life, what does it matter? What does it matter to me unless I'm finishing that work that's been assigned to me? The enemy wants you to lose your value of your life. The enemy wants you to feel like your life has no value, has no meaning, like you can't do it. The enemy wants you to stop. He says things to you. Stop living for God. He says things like, stop trying to do great things. You can't do it. That's not who you are. These are all lies, lies, lies. It's not true. But the scripture says, this will be the last verse. And it was the first verse I shared. Philippians 1.6. And I am certain that God, who began the work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. The consequence for not letting our lives be ready and present and being willing to be used by God, at the end of the day, we lose a sense of value of our own purpose and our own life. We have no sense of direction. We have no sense of full purpose. But what God is saying here is this. I am faithful to finish what I started in you. Have you ever seen God not finish what he started? Have you ever seen God abandon something or someone? I'm here to let you know, if you feel like you're abandoned or forgotten by God, you aren't. The simple fact that you're in this room breathing and listening to this or online listening to this is proof that God still has a purpose and a plan for you. That he still wants to see you through to the end. That he has vision for you. He has purpose for you. God is not against you. He's for you and he has a plan and a purpose for you. If he was against you, he wouldn't have sent Jesus to die on the cross for you. But because he sent Jesus to die on the cross for you, he's for you. He has a purpose for you. He has vision for you. He has a new year for you. He has new plans for you. He has a new thing for you. Let him see you through. 
Let him carry you through to the end. What he started in you, he will finish it. I want everyone just to bow your heads and close your eyes for a second. Think on your life. Think on your year. Man, was it a tough year? You may be saying, I disappointed myself this year. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't approach this with the eagerness. I, I wasn't ready. I wasn't willing. I was, I was more lukewarm than anything. I was in and out. I wasn't committed. I, 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 I didn't give it my all. I don't want you to beat yourself up if you feel that way. Because the truth is, the majority of us probably do. But this is where God's grace comes in. The plan of God begins to unfold right now. And all God is looking for is not somebody that is gifted and talented and amazing. He's looking for someone that's willing and ready. And right now in your heart, you may feel the tugging of the Holy Spirit. And you're telling yourself, I'm ready to say yes. I'm ready to say yes to the plan that God has for me. What am I saying yes to? I'm saying yes to the plan. I'm saying yes to his vision. I'm saying yes to his call. I'm saying yes. God, whatever you have for me, it's a yes for my heart. Just think about where you're at. If you're saying that's you, I got a yes in my heart. And I've been feeling lukewarm, but you know what? I'm turning that around and I'm, I'm repenting right now and I'm turning back to God. When I count to three, I just want you to slip your hand up. One, two, three. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. I see all those 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 hands. There's quite a few hands that went up. If you raise your hand tonight, could you do me a favor? Just stand up to your feet right now. If you raise your hand tonight, church, can we clap for everyone right now? Let's all stand. Everyone, let's stand with them. And let's, if you, if you raise your hand tonight and you're saying, I'm ready to turn in my lukewarmness and I'm ready to put a yes on my heart. I want to finish strong. You could finish this year strong. You could have, you could have wasted 364 days, but on the last day, you could give God your everything. That could be tonight. If you're saying, I'm ready to give God my everything, I want you to leave your seat and come forward right now. Leave your seat. If you raise your hand tonight, leave your seat and come forward. Leave your seat and come forward. Church, let's clap for all them. Let's clap. Let's clap. Let's get loud for them. Let's get loud for them. Come on, this is a big day. This is a big day. We're shaking it off. We're getting rid of everything. Getting rid of the old, getting rid of the old lifestyle, getting rid of the old way of doing things, getting rid of the old way of thinking, getting rid of the old things, and we're training them in for something new tonight. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you may be up here already, and in your heart, you're saying yes to Jesus tonight. But I want to ask if, I want to make one more very clear call. I want to be very clear about what the gospel is. The gospel is God's divine plan to save you from an eternal punishment that we deserve because of our sin. It's a price we owe, our, we owe because of the wrongdoing of our ways. We've all sinned. We know that that's true. And that price for sin is eternal punishment. But because God loves you so much, he sent Jesus to die for you while you were still a sinner. He didn't wait for you to get right. He made a way for you to get right. He sent Jesus on a cross, paid the price that you and I should have paid. And Jesus resurrected from the dead and purchased our freedom and our salvation. 
And it doesn't require you being a good person. It require, All it is is this, putting your faith in Jesus and repenting of your old ways and turning to Jesus tonight. There's only two places we can go when we die. We either go to heaven or we go to hell. That's it. And the only thing that determines that is where was your faith? Did you give Jesus your life or did you reject him while you were still alive? Don't wait. Let tonight be the night where you accept Jesus so that if you were to die tonight, you know for a fact that you would go to heaven. Not because you're good, but because Jesus forgave you and washed you with his blood and made you a brand new creation because you put your faith in him. If you want to put your faith in Jesus, receive forgiveness of your sins and receive salvation tonight. When I count to three, just raise your hand. One, two, three. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I see your two hands up there. I see your hand back there. I see your hands. You may be up here already. You may be up here already. Anybody else? Anybody else? If you're back there, I see you right here, brother. Anybody that just raised your hand right now, would you join us up here in the front? Just come up to the front with us. We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you. For all those that just raised your hand, join us up here. Join us up here. Let's clap for those that are coming up right now. Thank you, Jesus. That's one more soul. That's one more life being transformed. of you we're proud of you and we're gonna help you we're gonna help you your next step is to get baptized baptism is is, is is literally a physical representation of the decision you're making right now you're showing physically what happens to your old life you go underwater represents you dying to the old you but you come up from the water represents you coming out a new person that's what happens when Jesus gets a hold of your life the old goes in the grave, and you come out a brand new person. Doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter what you said, doesn't matter where you've been, Jesus washes everything away and makes you brand new. Your, your next step is to get baptized. The person in front of you, they're gonna help you get signed up. Saturday, you can get baptized. Someone say Saturday. That's our New Year's Eve service. Go into the new year a new person. Talk about finishing strong you could finish this year strong by getting baptized on december 31st yeah. you could redeem this entire year yeah. in one moment do that this saturday we need a few more altar workers please if you're a leader i see a few people up here uh a woman here a gentleman here just a few more a gentleman here please oh we got let's pray i want everyone to bow their head and close their eyes repeat this prayer after me say lord jesus thank you for sending, to, for dying on the cross and for raising from the dead so I can be saved. I receive the free gift of eternal life. My life is yours. I give you everything and I hold nothing back. I'm ready. I'm willing to live for you. I, I don't want a lukewarm life. I want to I wanna live on fire for you change me make me a new person and fill me with your spirit i put my faith in you jesus forgive me of all my sin and make me brand new in jesus name i pray amen amen church one more shout of praise for those that made the decision tonight to follow jesus we can pray with them church don't forget saturday's the day Let's celebrate with all those that made the decision. Let's invite friends and family. Saturday could be the day that your friends and family get saved. Let's be here. Don't forget, 6 p.m., we're going to have a pre-service thing. At 7 p.m., we're going to celebrate. And at 9 p.m., we're going to bring in the new year. We want to see you here this Saturday. Invite friends and family that everyone know. And then don't forget, Sunday is our first day of the year. It's the first service of the year. We're going to be in the house of God. Sunday, 9, 11, or 1.30 in Espanol. Love you guys. Have a wonderful night. If you need prayer, come on up. We'd love to pray with you. God bless you. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. God bless you, church. Have a wonderful night.